The next section in chapter two is going to be about triangles. And this should be a relatively uh, short section, okay? Because it only deals about triangles, which is really nice. So the first thing I just want us to go over are what are the different types of triangles we can have, all right? Now let me get out a black marker here. So we have our types of triangles. And the first one is going to be what we call a scalene. triangle. And what makes this special is no two sides are of equal length. All right, so an example of this would be something like this. All right, I guess I can make this a little straighter. There we go. So we could say this is three feet, this is four feet, and this is five feet. All right, let's exaggerate this a little bit more. Let's go three, six feet, and 11 feet. There we go. I like that better. So notice here, no two sides are, are the same length. Now, an isosceles triangle... is one where two of the sides are equal in length. All right, so that would be a situation like this, where this is 10 feet, 10 feet, and then five feet. All right, so that would be an isosceles triangle. We also have the equilateral triangle. And this is when we have all three sides of equal length. All right, so a picture of that will be something like this. where they are all the same exact length. And then finally, we have a right triangle, which is kind of like a subset of the scalene. But what makes this really special is that it forms, or actually, let me, let me, let me break it down even further. Two legs form a right angle. All right, and that looks just like this. Where this would be like three, four, and five. In fact, a three, four, five triangle is very special. We call it a Pythagorean triple, which we'll go over that in a little bit. <clears throat> now, one property that all triangles have is that the sum of all the angles inside of a triangle is equal to 180 degrees, all right? So, for example, if we have a right triangle and I asked you to find alpha, well, we know that the sum of the angles, so we have 90 degree angle, that's right here, plus 30 degrees, that's right here, plus alpha has to equal 180. Therefore, just some basic math, we would say 90 plus 30, is 120 and then subtract 120 from both sides alpha would equal 60 degrees all right oops sorry did it again now 
I am not going to draw this. So the website I'm going to be using, and you feel free to use this, it's free. Wish I could spell it properly. It's called GeoGebra, all right? So I already have the website here, so let me go ahead and find it real fast for us. So here it is right here. <clears throat> and what this website does is um, it allows you to draw like real good shapes. It does angles, it does measurements and everything. Because I'm gonna go ahead and start showing us some uh, different properties of triangles that all triangles have, all right? The first one I'd like to talk about are the medians and centroids so like i said i'm gonna i'm just gonna draw this very quickly and then i'm gonna show you how it works so the medians would be if you were to find the midpoint opposite of the angle and draw a line this would be a median okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna find the median for all the angle or all the uh all the angles within our triangle to do this, I'm going to go ahead and just get out my triangle tool. All right. And here's our triangle. Okay. Now, from here, I'm just going to find midpoints. Now, GeoGebra does this very quickly for us. All we have to do is just go ahead and find the midpoint tool, which is right here under Construct. And I'm just going to go ahead and click the line segments. So between A and B, there's midpoint D. Between B and C, there's our midpoint there. And finally, between A and C, there's our midpoint there. Now, something interesting is going to happen. When I create the medians, remember, the median is the midpoint opposite the angle. So if I connect these two right here, that's my midpoint right there. That's my median F. Now I'll do that with the other angles. Capital F to B, and then D to C. Notice that in the middle, oops, sorry. In the middle here, point G, I've created what we call the centroid, okay? so. When the point at which all the medians within a triangle intersects is called the centroid. So let me go ahead and I want to copy and paste this into our notes. Now I can make it look better than that. There we go. All right, so like I said, G right here in the middle. That is our centroid. And then all of the other lines are medians. Now, remember, I said this doesn't matter. Let me see if I can go back to GeoGebra real quick. It doesn't matter what kind of triangle you have. So if I just grab point A and just start moving it around, notice that even though the medians change, my centroid still remains in the middle. So if you have something that looks like an isos or uh, an equilateral triangle, centroid's in the middle. If you have an isosceles triangle, looks something like, eh, maybe like this. All right, centroid's still in the middle, even if you had a right triangle. The centroid is still in the middle. So that's like one of those properties that you can always bank on when it comes to triangles. All right. So now let's continue our study. Perimeter should be relatively familiar for us. The word perimeter in general just means to add up the distance of the sides. 
So if I had a right triangle with sides three, four, five, let's say they're feet, our perimeter here would be three feet plus four feet plus five feet, which would be three plus four. Seven plus five is 12 feet. Now, if we wanted to find the surface area of a triangle, well, we can actually derive that. Now, the formula is one half base times the height. But like I said, you can derive this just by thinking outside the box. And I use that pun perfectly because if you have a rectangle or a box, we know the area for the, for the rectangle, if I label this base and that height would be B times H. However, if I were to cut this in half, notice I've created a right triangle So the area of the right triangle would be area equals one half times base. So you can derive this formula just by thinking about what's happening, okay? Now, let's say for example, we knew the height was 10 feet, the length was 20 feet, and we wanted the surface area this would, this would just be area equals one half times 10 times 20 or area equals 200 divided by two, which is 100 feet. So that's what the area of that right triangle would be. So we have another formula here that we can use when we have, so I was starting to write this, use Huron's formula, or Hero's formula, when you have a triangle with three known sides, and no right angle. So Hero's formula looks like this. The, the area of the right or of the triangle will equal the square root of S times S mi the quantity S minus A times the quantity S minus B times the quantity S minus C, where S is equal to one half times the quantity A plus B plus C. So here's a nice little example here. Notice we do not have a right angle, but I'm gonna label this side 200 feet 208, oh no, way too short. Um, how about 400 feet? And then we'll make this long side 792 feet. Well, if you want to use Hero's formula for this, the first thing we're going to find is S. So S is going to be one half times the quantity 200 plus 400 plus 792. So if you give me a second. I'm gonna pull my calculator and do this. I'm doing it off camera. 200 plus 400 plus 792. So this is gonna to total up to 696. And then the area would equal 696 times 
696 minus 200 times a quantity 696 minus 400 times the quantity 696 minus 792 and that's going to give us a mistake here and that's because we're going to negative underneath there So here's an example here where we're going to use Hero's formula to calculate the area of this triangle. First thing we have to do is find S. So S is going to be 1 half times 200 plus 400 plus 510. And that's going to equal 200 plus 400 plus 510 divided by 2 is 555. So now, the area of the triangle is going to be the square root of 555 times the quantity of 555 minus 200, 555 minus 400, and then 555 minus 510. So I'm going to be doing this on my calculator. You can't see it right now, but... I'm typing it in. So 555 minus that. And then 555 minus 510. And I came up with the area equals 37,070 feet. So using Hero's formula is very straightforward. All you have to do is just remember that uh, you use this when you do not have a right triangle. And you know the three sides. So, more about this right triangle that I was just talking about. The Pythagorean theorem, I think like almost everybody has heard about this. But what the Pythagorean theorem does is it relates the legs of a right triangle. to the hypotenuse. So it's very important that we at least set up the right triangle properly. The right angle is always going to be opposite of our hypotenuse. Usually we label the hypotenuse C, which means the legs are going to be A and B respectively. And the Pythagorean theorem is the relationship of a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, remember, Pythagorean theorem only applies to right triangles. All right, that's it. So, if we call this angle A, B, and C, then what we can do is we can go ahead and we can find any side we want as long as we know two of the sides. And, and to be honest with you, once we get a better foundation in trig, we can go ahead and find other things provided we don't know enough information. But that's more on that later. So earlier I mentioned a Pythagorean triple. Well, what makes a Pythagorean triple so special is that if we were to use the Pythagorean theorem here to find C, notice that you end up getting 
very nice whole number answers. So if we have sides three and four, three squared plus four squared is gonna be nine plus 16 is 25 squared, or I'm sorry, 25 equals C squared. And when we take the square root of both sides, Whenever you get a nice whole number answer, like the number five, we call that a Pythagorean triple. And there's a bunch of them that exist. In fact, that's going to lead us into <clears throat> our next topic, which are similar triangles. So similar triangles occurs when The first thing, the corresponding angles are equal. Let me be more specific. The corresponding angles of the triangles are equal and the corresponding sides of the triangles are proportional. All right. So there's a very famous problem that hopefully we've all seen before. And that problem deals with this. Let's say you were just standing next to this, uh, let me draw it down here. Let's say you're standing and the sun's out and you're standing next to this extremely large building. All right, and here's what we know. We know your height is six feet and the shadow that you cast on the ground is 10 feet. And for some reason, you were interested in the height of this building. You have no idea how tall this building is. But what you do know is that if you were to measure the shadow casted on the building, this shadow, let me exaggerate it, is 1,500 feet. All right, so it's a very long shadow. All right? Well, what you've just created is what we call similar triangles. And let me show you what I mean here. First, we have this triangle right here. The height of you and the shadow itself. So I can label this A, B, and C in terms of segments, all right? You've also created this triangle as well. Oops. You've created that triangle also where the shadow is a hundred or is uh, 1,500 feet. Okay. Now we can label this. We'll call it a prime C prime and B prime. The relationship that we just formed is this, the segment AC, over BC is proportional to A prime B prime, sorry, A prime C prime over B prime C prime. In other words, the only thing that differs between these two triangles is scale. That's it. So we can figure out exactly how tall this building is just by saying, well, I have the ratio of six over 10 and that has to equal the ratio of, now you gotta be careful, all right? Because you gotta label these things properly. So we have the height of the building Y over the shadow 1500. Once again, if you look here, we have a proportion, cross multiply, six times 1500 is gonna equal 10 times Y. Six times 1,500 is 9,000. 
and dividing both sides by 10 is going to give us 90 feet. So the height of the building is 90 feet. So it's like a nine story building. And these are very practical applications when it comes to similar triangles. Okay. And that is going to be it for this video. So I'll see you in the next one.